The Maroon and White Pod brought to you by CityLink. For bookings, timetables, updates and any other information, head to citylink.ie. Now you're welcome along to the Maroon and White Pod. Uh, we're here to look ahead to round two of the Senior and Intermediate Football Championships and I'm delighted to be joined by Jonathan Higgins, Barry Cullinan and Port Cunningham to look ahead to the action. Jonathan, coming to you first, the, we had John there when we were reviewing round one, but round two now coming up this weekend. For a lot of these teams with the winners playing, the winners of round one and the losers playing, the losers, the groups will somewhat begin to take shape. Oh, it's a huge week, isn't it? It's, it's definitely moving weekend, isn't it, really? This is probably more important, really, than round three, as crazy as that sounds. Uh, particularly, I think the format has worked quite well. We're only one game into it, as you touched, but I think it has really, really set it up. And like for, for now, a lot of seasons, the lines are already on the line this early in the championship. Um, we've got the bite. It's amazing, isn't it? That one little tweak is what's all the missing in the intercounty setup as well. We, we'll, I don't want to go off on a wild tangent, but we'll see what structure is in place next year. But if you are looking at the current one, that's the easy f- fix out of it. Just let the winners play each other and then the, and the losers and, and, and in turn, because it adds so much bite. It adds so much craziness. Like you look at the, you'll pull up the tables here in front of me, but it's, 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 it's tight. It's so tight already. And a team that hasn't, like it's the losing side of it, if you haven't got your first bit of the job done the first game out you're under big pressure here um all, already and it, and it really really sets it up nicely i'm just gonna i should have done this before and but uh, you caught me on the hop but if you look look at it there like i'm looking at group one in particular like Le- Le- let more got the like got the they got the start off their top of that group at the moment but like having that job done and now, like already setting head against Montpellier, my law. Look, I, I know three will qualify uh, and all that, but like there's such a tangible and such a huge incentive to finish top of the group. It, it really, really sets it up nicely. And yeah, no, big, big weekend. It'll be hard to keep track of it at all because there's that much excitement in store. But yeah, no, big, big weekend uh, in all the groups actually. So it's yeah, certainly something to to keep an eye on. And I suppose just wait for the feast. We even have the the American is back home for it as well. You know, stuff is getting serious here, don't you? Yeah, he's he's made his return from the goals in the states. He has, yeah. I don't know where he's going to play him now anymore. Bruce Gobbler, eat your heart out and all that. Um, how was the Chicago Championship there? Uh, I know it was pretty good. Now, to be fair, um, Dander was really good. Yeah, weather was very nice. Something yeah, don't different. expect that. Don't expect that in the weekend. We'll say that, listeners. <laughs> good, good standard now. Good amount of intercounty players out there as well. So it was, it was a high enough house standard championship. Yeah. Just on the action this again, Pork, I was just saying there, the, obviously the losers of the first round have to play each other. And if you're to lose again this weekend, you're straight away under pressure. Yeah, you are. And look at it, uh, it's, as, as Jonathan touched on there, it probably is the second game is nearly as, uh, more important than the third game at the moment. You don't want to go into that game and lose lose this weekend and then you're nearly hoping results, results go your way and hopefully they go your way and you can pick up points somewhere along the line like but like you losing your losing your two games in a row you're probably looking at the the dreaded relegation side of the uh, thing so yeah unfortunately it comes to a group fa- format like this the two winners play each other the two losers play each other yeah. isn't it isn't it amazing just something such a small little tweak i think actually thomas O'Shea said it on was the sunday game j- during the year and like it, when it's said to you it's glaringly obvious um, it just adds so much excitement, and even in the group that's the draw, like that's wide open uh, uh, as well. Like the the draw re- goes back to means it goes back to default one v four, two v three. So that still adds a lot of excitement. That like there's none it's, of the groups. It's, it's, it's mad. It's mad to see though. Like if, if you lose two games, like you really are like in the dread relegation, and then it's all about. Whether it's it's just a straight semi finals, isn't it? And knockout then I think. Yeah, to the, the bottom bottom it's, four into semi finals and then the losers playing the so final and the loser of that is gone. So it's so it's so cutthroat if you lose this again, like yeah, yeah, you know, it really is. Yeah, it's a big, big sure big, then if you if you meet one of the teams from the group of death too in relegation, yeah, yeah. you're you're looking up, you're under pressure. Mm. Look, uh, it's a brilliant it's a brilliant weekend <clears throat> and it's really exciting yeah. for, for the club players, like it's uh it's a brilliant championship, and in fairness, Galway, particularly in the football, like the league structure is good and the champion structure is good, um, and it's it's really open. Like you know, obviously in any in any championship, there's going to be one or two teams where where people see 
are a little bit ahead of the pack. And you'd say Cork Finn are probably probably the one team in Galway that are ahead of the pack. But outside of that, like picking picking winners in these games is is really really difficult. And picking a winner of the championship is even even more difficult. If we're to look so uh, at Group One, um, Kashan, Montpellier, Mala, there, Barry. Uh, Montpellier was obviously a really positive performance considering all the bodies are down. No clubs really able to cope with what they've lost. But they can't really take... They're, they're still on zero points and they still just need to get points on the board straight away this weekend. Yeah, yeah. and like even if you look back to the Harlan Championship last weekend, you had games where maybe teams that didn't have a great performance in the first round of the Championship came up against teams... And we're bet came up against teams that had really good performances in the first round of the championship, didn't get over the line. So you had two teams going in with zero points. And, it, and, and in a lot of cases, it was the team that didn't have the great performance in the first round of the championship that came out on top. And you're saying, geez, we're two, two in and, and no points. And unfortunately for Carlos Strand or Mount Bellew, that'll be the case. Now, I'd say, look, Mount Bellew, like to be losing all the players that they've lost is, is huge, but they still have a lot of quality in that team. And I would predict that Montpellier will win that game. And I would say for Val and his management team, having Carlos Strand second was probably when they were looking at it, and no disrespect to Carlos Strand, was probably a good thing for them in that it's a game that probably, even though when it came to it, they'd be disappointed they didn't get something out of the Salt Hill game. But if they were looking at all their games in the group, the Salt Hill game would have been the one that say, well, maybe we mightn't get anything from that but we need to get something from the Carlos Strand game second. So I think it's it's coming at the right time for Mount Bellew. Uh, unfortunately for Carlos Strand, it did really well to stay up last year, but I think they're going to be under pressure this year. It's the thing, Jonathan, like, it's a great point Barry makes there, like, your performance in the first round doesn't count for Anton this weekend. No, it certainly doesn't. Um, and the groups are all that tight. Um, and look, every every position is is huge importance as well. Um, but like, it's like everyone. I th- I still do believe that getting off the mark on the first one is a huge caveat. I think it's a huge monkey off your back. Um, it, it really sets you on the right track. I think it is a difficult challenge. You do see a bounce, but like, you're losing the first week out, and you're. Um, you're under pressure straight away and particularly you're already at best probably looking at uh, an extra game going into the prelim. I think it's very difficult for any of the losers out of round one to top the groups. You're, you know, you're relying on someone to, to have a little bit of a fallen grace uh, really. So like the momentum is key and the flip side is that is you can already like Barry's touching on it there, but I already fear for Carlos Rand. Um, I think they're like, that's a long way back. Look, it's a difficult group and was, but let him more getting the win. Um, as well on that particular game, that was nearly a first day out shootout to I think to avoid relegation from my point of view. And I was we'll see how it develops. Like they will fight and they will come through, but it's very difficult to see them not finishing bottom of that group. Um, the other like the other groups are, you know, you're you're looking at the winners like McCullen have, you know, they've got the win. It was probably a win that they had to do. Like there's not a lot of bonus from uh, McCullen perspective in terms of you, you've got the win. Yes, it's more the it was worse if they had lost it, if that makes sense. Like the wind just, just keeps them ticking along. Um, the one for me is fascinating the game of the weekend is just how uh, one of Ayabi, like I think I joked in commentary saying that at halftime in the game against St. James is that he's about to go in and plug in the hairdryer and it came out in force. Look, the, the red card had a big impact in the game, but they absolutely tore into St. James's a game that they were so outclassed and outplayed and outfought and outtacticed and out, out, out every word you can, you can drive in the sun. But the one thing that struck him ahead afterwards was in in pure bun style. He had the team out on the pitch for a big, big huddle afterwards in June after the draw. And he pretty much, I would imagine if you can see, tell him, didn't I tell you, didn't I tell you? That's the fight we have to do. That's what we take it out. And they won't fear uh, Mike Cullen uh, um, in, the, in the game at the weekend. And look, probably going to take a lot from the Demore game like that. Look, the wind affected things big time, but Demore will be ultimately disappointed that they had them on the ropes and then take it over the line. And that's, that's for me, it's, it's one of the fascinating games of the weekend. How much will the Buns and Abbey have them that revved up, that much fire, and maybe got a bit of dirty diesel out of the tank uh, straight away that we've seen from 
you know, last year as well, Dunmore in terms of coming up from intermediate, it took them a half almost um, slash a game to get motor in the championship. And then they got that massive win in, in Tube Stadium and, and they kicked on and were quite difficult to beat. Is that moment there already? I think that is a fascinating, you know, the guys touched on games being unpredictable to call. That for me is more and more so. You'd still have to fancy McCullum, but one of a Abbey, you'd still have a sneaky feel, wouldn't you? Just on Cash Rampor, because you're obviously the your local rivals right beside you. Um, why do you think they're struggling so much at the minute? Is it solely down to the players they've lost? Um, yeah, I'd say it is. Like, like you have to remember too. Like, probably one of their marquee inside forwards last year that kind of stood up for them in the game in, Ball- in Ballinasloe, Kieran Donnan. He's done his ACL. He's out for this year. He, I think, he kicked two five in one of the games last year against Killannon. I think he kicked two five or two four or something like that. And like when you're losing a player of that that amount of score and threat to you, it nullifies every the whole game for Carlos Strand because their whole game has to change. They're probably looking, picking up the ball, they're looking to deliver a quick ball inside to him. Now with the change, they'll probably get runners on the ball. Maybe it's something they don't really have. And like losing losing a marquee forward is obviously so key to any club team. And that's it's uh, it's unfortunate for Carlos Strand, but as the uh, the two Ben said, like it is, it's a it's a torture. Two games they have next, and the likes of I know Montpellier you my law have lost players. But they're still the team that they're still the bare bones of the players that have played in county finals and county semi finals and be going head to toe with Currafin. And then you have the likes of Salt and Lockerbie who are pushing at the moment to try and break up, break into, and take the crown off Currafin. So for me, like it's just it's just about Carlos Strand is probably is, is nearly. It's it's just getting everything right. Get but if they have niggas, probably get them right and like on, on the on the bad side of it, get ready for nearly a relegation battle. You'd say. On that point, is it Montpellier's spine which will have more this weekend? I just think I I think I think it'll come down to Montpellier's side of just the, some of the players have the experience. I know Colin Murray is back for them now as well. He's a he's a massive addition. Like he'll be a driving force in that back, and then it, they'll have the likes of John Daly then as well and. Then you have Barry Barry McHugh kick freeze himself. So like it's 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 just the players that have probably been there, been through it all. So that their experience would probably get them down the stretch, I think, and just get over Carlos Strand. Yes, I'm going to come to you for a prediction, and by how much this weekend, uh, I'm going to go Montpellier my lot by seven. Pork. Montpellier my lot by five. Jonathan, please by four. And Barry. Uh Four, yeah, I think four would be a, a good one. Jesus, seven is harsh now. Seven, but, seven uh, is a clip, and like they, they will be fight. Like, you know, I fully expect Montpellier to win. Uh, and they, the, another key player was in the second half in the fight back against Old Hillis Foley. He really grabbed the game by the scruff of the, or the neck. Um, well, Hearn as well was, was lively up top. They do have a bit more, but like, there's always going to be a battle in Karen Strand. And like, yeah, I think seven. I could be proven wrong, but it seems a little bit ambitious. Three minutes, put your Twitter handle up there at the end. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's open yeah. for all comments. <laughs> <laughs> you, you need you need a bigger fishing rod for that amount of debate. I know. <laughs> yeah, well, don't worry. I'm sure if they win, they'll be the first people on to me. So that's no problem. I'll take it. Uh, the other game in that group, Barry Lettermore saw Tillock on 145 on Sunday in Pierce Stadium live on TG Car. It's it's, it's a it's an exciting one here, Barry, because Lettermore obviously. I, on the back of their first opening win, the two sides here unbeaten in the group. There's a bit of an unknown. Let your moral fancy a crack off it, but Saltill will be looking to nearly get top spot wrapped up this weekend. Yeah, like if you had Jonathan's money, you'd be you'd be putting it on Saltill. But I tell you one thing, this won't be easy. And like Saltill's performance against Montpellier was poor, and there's no point in in. And saying anything otherwise, and you know, I think they, I think they'll they'll be disappointed with that, and they'll know that Letcher Moore, who as a club are doing like remarkable work, have had really good success at underage level over the last couple of years, and producing some really really good footballers, and they were they were full value for their win in the first round. You know, there was never any doubts about it. They win, scored heavily, did well defensively, and. The one thing that they'll be saying on Saturday or Sunday is, is that if we bring a huge fight to this, so a lot of these club games, okay, you have some team like Corrafin, when Corrafin are full flight, doesn't matter what you bring to them, they'll go and they'll they'll tear you apart. But if you bring huge fight, huge energy, 
uh, discipline, you you hit your freeze, then it puts you in with a right shot. And them three or four key messages will be what, what let more be discussing all week, just getting those three or four things right. And I think it'll give them a right chance. Now, it's still probably Trump for Sawtill, but just about. And I think without Rob Finnerty, they're not as good. Um, and I'd say a lot of their kind of bigger players would have been disappointed enough with their own performance in the first round. And they're going to have to really step it up. And for Finney and the lads, they'll, they'll be demanding a performance this week because if they don't get it, they won't win. Jule, it's it's an argument that's been made, Barry. Leshamore do seem to have three or four scoring forwards that maybe mm-hmm. a lot of clubs don't have that can score. But do they have the backs to stop the start till forwards this weekend? Yeah. Uh... That's, is that giving a bit too much credit to the Sawtill forwards? Why do you not think there's as good? Well, I think as... without Rob Finnerty, like I would say, I, I thought, you know, no, I, I'm not having to go with that. I thought Tomo was poor against Mount Bellew. Um, didn't think he offered a huge amount, and I thought he was well marshaled by Billy Mannion. Um, and He's probably their main threat. And Matthew Thompson did really well, but would Letchamore have enough to, to curtail him? I, I think Letchamore will get enough bodies back. And as I said, that'll be their message. We can get bodies back. We can get structure. We can get shape. As long as we don't give away a freeze, then we m- Sartil might struggle to get the scores to beat us. How do you see that game, Jonathan? Uh, probably a lot similar to what Barry's touched on there as well. Salt Hill probably flattered to deceive a little bit in in that victory. They did enough. There was a times to look very impressive. Look, and they do have, for me, one of the best players in the country still. I think there's a couple of them in Galway, but Maher was just different gravy, and he's added that little bit of style. Like the point that he got in the first half into the into the town goal at Tume was just a joy to behold, and it's that extra little bit element. But he still has that raw dog, uh, you know, a p- proper bear out in the middle of the field, which will be badly needed in this game because if Salt Hill are going to win it, they're going to have to earn it. It'll be, it will be a battle, you know, the intensity that uh, Lenmore will bring to, to the game. Uh, but for me, it's, you know, we talked about maybe the forwards for Salt Hill maybe being not quite up to their particular personal best. And obviously, Finnerty is a huge loss. But for me, the the huge threat that they have is from the run from deep, the half back line. Um, there's um, this, you know, there's a serious bit of weapon power in that one, isn't there? Really, like Sweeney or Flaherty, um, and that's where I think the key is. And I think that's in the first half in particular against Mount Bellew, That's where they got a lot of their 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 joy for, from. Uh, and it's very hard to defend against that as well. So I, I just think they will have enough. Like I, I, I'd imagine it will be a battle. Uh, it'll actually, I think it could be extremely hard fought. But I just think Salt Hill will just have enough to get over the line. I won't be saying anything as ambitious as your, as your seven points or anything like that. But I just think the bit of structure. I think Salt Hill will have learned a lot as well. But that second half in particular, the first day out against Mount Bellew and how they adjusted and how they had to, I suppose, win the game. Then kind of have to deal with a bit of a backlash from Montpellier my lot, but then you know the Thompson score and the bit of class to get over the line. I think that will serve them well, but and I I do think they'll have learned a lot from that. And I I fancy Salt Hill to to win this one game three or four points. Yeah, like a Salt Hill there, Park a scoring return nine points at this time of year. It's just it's not going to win many games. No, it's not. But like it, it, you go back to the style of game that probably was was probably completely Montpellier being what Montpellier do is flood the defence. You try to break them down, and Barry Barry is right in what he's saying. And but a big thing for me and Jonathan touched on it there is the runners that Sawtill will have coming from deep, and like Daniel Flaherty, Carl Sweeney, even John Maher when he picks up ball and just runs at the heart of your defence. There's only one thing you can do with either let him through or, or foul him. Like, and they're such powerful men that. They are going to they are going to create problems. I think that's where they'll create the problems for against Letchmore, and then you have the likes of hope, like the likes of Tom O'Clan and Matthew Thompson coming on the loop. A big thing, uh, obviously, for Salt Hill is the the missing of Rob Finnerty. He orchestrates absolutely everything. I remember seeing him last year for Salt Hill, um, in Chewing Stadium. I think it was against Anna Down, maybe, and he he just orchestrated the whole attack, everything, like everything went through him. The ball went to him. He, like every attack, it was nearly being carried the ball to Rob and play, and then the whole attack starts. So that's a big loss, obviously, for Salt Hill. But I still do think that the runners from deep that they'll have will cause enough problems against Letchmore and 
just get them over the line by that probably three or four points as well. Sorry, just to put in on that one, there's one fascinating one, and it was fascinating to him in, the, in that first game out, was Montpellier tried to push John Daly up on John Maher, and Daly played it as a kind of a, I don't know what you call it, a high-rise sweeper or something like that. He was almost in the half-forward line. Maher is just, was like, John Daly's strong, he's a beast, but Maher was just bouncing off him. Like, he hopped off him two or three times. Who are Letter Moore going to have to put on to tag him? Because he is just a wrecking ball at the moment. Yeah. Um, that's... Like I know it's, about... it's probably matches Barish, you'd imagine. Yeah, I, I, I was actually just going to jump in on that. I think the battle between Matthias Barish and and yep. and John Maher will be it'll be it'll be a big one. Now, will he be able for him? I'm not sure. John Maher has, like, by a stretch, he's the most improved footballer in the country. Mm. And you know, when we're looking at footballers of the year. To me, you're looking at two Galway contenders, probably one Armagh, and that's Paul and Paul and John Maher. And um, like he continued that form in the last day. And if they didn't have him, they weren't going to win. And um, again, like it, it, it kind of simplifies Letra Moore's game plan a little bit, and that <clears throat> get loads of bodies around John, you know, does, does stifle what Sartell are going to have to bring to the game. Or am I right in saying were you playing when you played Letchmore early in the year in the league? No, I didn't play. I didn't play that game. No, I didn't. I I was at it though. I was actually at it out there. Oh no, sorry, I actually wasn't at that game. No, it was a different game. Okay, okay. And uh, just your your prediction on Salt Hill Letchmore. How do you see it going? I I, I do think I just think Salt Hill probably will just have the the runners from deep. He just caused maybe too much problems, and I think they'll just get over the line by the three three to four points max. And Barry. Sawtill by one. Sawtill yeah. by one. Yeah, you can see that. And Jonathan, you've said there three. Uh, it's Sartil. about three, three to four. Yeah, but I'd like the the more you talk about it, like it, it is going to be like if the, the if there is the three or four that we kind of touched on there, that's probably a late flurry after being ground being ground down. But um, but yeah, no, it's going to be quite the battle. Really, a game we're really looking forward to actually. Yeah, I'm going to go there. Sawtill by four. Um, at the weekend. Uh, on to group two. Jonathan, it's it's a game you've already mentioned. One of A Abby Mike Cullen half five in Pierce Stadium on Saturday evening. Yeah. Just even going on the opening round, like Mike Cullen mixed the bad with the good, and the good was obviously towards the end. One of A did something similar as well. Yeah, like uh, you know, ultimately it's one long ball into the square that gets a flick on that's the difference between the sides in the end, isn't it? Um uh, it's a game that I think you're from my Cullen and it's just ticks box yes we got the important win it would have been a disaster with the new management like what a challenge that was it must have been at half time they were down by a considerable deficit down in man because David Wynn had just got the black card just before half time um I, and first the out in management as a touch on that's a fairly daunting half time it's a case though I think of you know passing the test that you needed to do, and there's not a lot more to take out of that game. Um, the big thing is, I, I won't say they're going to struggle, but we're going to. There's going to be a big difference potentially between the McCullen in the group stages and the McCullen that we might see later on in the year. For for now, it's almost is damage limitation too strong of a word? It's a case of just getting you know patch it up as much as you can, and then see can you get the likes of Sean Kelly uh, back into it and, and see how they flow then. Um, McLaughlin seemed to be lively I didn't get to see a hell of a lot of this game now but McLaughlin seemed to be back to himself catching ball Clark caught a few important balls in the end as well from what I could see um, and I suppose they, they stood up with a bit of character and then Walsh up, up top like he's he's, a, he's always been a, a very good forward Like it's not really surprised to see him brought in with Leitrim there as well last year so look they're, they are have a bit of quality and look and ultimately they have been in the situation many times where they've you go back over the last five or six years, the amount of tight, tight games that they've ground out and they've got over the line, you know, they've a significant advantage in that matter. But the thing about it, I love one of the Abbey is like, I think a lot will depend really, like I'm sure you've all heard as well, that the rumour mill is in full flow this week about killing McDade. Is, is, how bad is that thumb injury? Like, what, you talk to one person, he's goosed. You talk to another person, he, he's okay. What you would say was, we, I've talked about the John Maher performance for Salt Hill, but Killing McDade, what he did in that first day out, against um, St. James's in the second half where he literally fought and grabbed 
the ball man that works and drove to the line, watch the goal, the turnover, watch the turnover for a couple of points that he got there to come back in the drawing point. He's absolutely imperative to the Monave system. Like they do have they do, they are a, a nice team to watch, you know, they're fully fully revved up, fully motivated. But McDade is just he's just a different gravy for them. And if he isn't available, it changes things. If he is available and flying it, I think this could be a right grind, a right battle, and potentially like one of those games that if it stays even, it could it could turn into quite a battle in the closing stretch. But a game again, I'm really, really looking forward to as well because I just think there's a bit there that they've they have potential to to pick up on and drive home from it and build on that second half performance against St James's and uh, yeah, certainly another one to keep an eye on. Can I just jump in, jump in on one of a, I think. Tactically, they got a really, really good against against St James's, and I go back to um, Westmeath against Galway this year in the championship. They man marked Paul Conroy, and out of all the games so far, or all year in Galway's championship, the, the least influential Paul was in the championship was the Westmeath game because even when Westmeath were getting fourteen behind the ball. They were only getting 13 behind the ball. There was one always tagging Paul Conroy, gave him absolutely no space. And the, it surprised me that no team did that after Westmead. And the next team I saw do that was Monave. And I thought it was, you know, Paul was influential and kicked some 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 good frees and stuff like that. But overall, his influence of the game wasn't as strong as you would expect. And it was primarily down to Monave Abbey man marking him. So it was good thinking by 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 Bunt and, and Mike Farrer and these lads. So they they obviously, you know, we know that they're good on the line. I just don't know do they have enough players to counteract the threat that Mike Cullen will bring to them. And on the flip side of that, I don't think we're giving Dunmore enough credit. Dunmore a good team. Um, they're a really, really good team and they've really good forwards. Gary Delaney has done a really good job and what it shows is that you, you need, like he's a good while down there and those two, three, four years, everyone gets comfortable with what, what they're doing and then you throw in a bit of quality and it's it's a recipe for success. And I would say the more will be eyeing up second spot in that group and be disappointed if they don't get it. Do you think it helps Barry Doe that Monavay didn't have Killian McDaid last year. So it's it's not like it's something new. I suppose when the intermediate championship got to the end of the stages, they didn't have him. I know he's a massive loss to have, but they they have played big games without him. Uh, yeah, but they haven't played Mike Cullen without him. Mm. Um, and St. James is, would have been a step up from anything. They would have faced an intermediate as well. And without him... But they've got a result, probably not. Um, he's a huge loss, and you know, injury blighted a lot of his his season this year. When he got back and got into form, he was brilliant, and you just hope that injury doesn't kind of curtail his his season from one this year as well. Because the reality is, it's it's short, and like you know, an inter county season is long. He goes through a full league campaign, provincial. Group stages of the All Ireland Championship knockout. There's a lot of games. Club Championship is over. It's over in flash. You know, three games, you're done. Reality is six weeks. And if you aren't involved in a relegation playoff or you're not through to the knockout stages, that's it. Six weeks, it's over. Mike Cullen as well, Pork. Nobody seems to know whether Sean Kelly, Peter Cook, or Neil Monkai will be available this weekend. Yeah, look at it. It's 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 a it's a club that's rostered with so many different talented players and stuff like um like when you're losing, saying someone like a club is losing the likes of Peter Cook, Sean Kelly, and Neil McGay, you don't know if they're going to be playing. They're still they're still coming out grinding results. Like obviously Jonathan touched on it there. Like it shows a good bit of grit and determination and, and just uh, raw hard work from them coming back. Um, from the first day out, they were down to the ten men or to fourteen men. So they were with uh, Dave Wins black card, but then they just they dug in. Went down to probably the base of the game. Went down to the hard work, hard, hard work, and they just got themselves over the line. Yeah, it was uh, probably a punch, fist, whatever a goal at the end. But like they've, it shows the other side of Mike Cullen. Everyone thinks they're flashy footballers, flashy skill, um, skillful players, but they have the hard grit as well. So look at it. It's a, it's a big, it's a big loss. No, Sean Kelly, Peter Cook, or Neil McKay. No one knows what's going to happen, but it's showing that other players can step into the the fold and get them over the line as well. So just predictions there again, Pork. How do you see that one? 
Um, I'm, for me, like it is, it's going to be a home dinner. I, I do think a uh, big thing of it, it from one of the Abbey is whether Killian is fit or not. Um, for me, I'm, I'm going to go with probably the safer option, just go and call him, but it's only going to be by two, two, three max, I think. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you there. I think my column by two, just to scrape through it. How do you see it, Jonathan? Yeah, similar sort of him sheet here, really, battle. Um, but I think my column will have enough in the end, even with Killian there. Um, I think there's enough experience. I think it could be a really close game going on the gun, but uh, I would go my column by two. And Barry? Um, <clears throat> uh, I think my column could pull away. I think my column by five. Ooh. On to the other game in that group, Dunmore McHale's obviously looking to react against St. James's. Barry, you mentioned Dunmore, one of the most impressive teams, but do you think this Mike Cullen defeat narrowly that they had could affect this team mentally? Um, in a positive way or a negative way? In a negative way. They were nine points up at half time. Didn't get didn't get the scores in the second half to win it. Um, no, I don't think so. I think I think I think they're still very young and they're learning. And it would have been worse if it was a James's or Armand of Abbey that had that had done that because again. Gary Delaney's smart, he's around a long time, he's a good football brain, and he will have looked at the group and said, look, high possibility we won't get anything from my Cullen game. Our real targets are St. James's and Munave. And they would have learned a lot from that my Cullen game, positive and negative. They would have done a lot of video stuff, analyzed it, worked on it. I think it'll stand to them. I think it'll stand to them this weekend. And um you know, I, I think it was a good learning experience, a good learning experience for them, and I think they'll be all the better for it. Pork, you mentioned earlier about it being a ruthless championship. James's were very unlucky last year not to meet reach a semi final. If if this doesn't go their way this weekend, they become one of the sides now under pressure. Yeah, it is. That, that's exactly it. Like um you look at it, they were really unlucky last year out to the war in the quarterfinals, and now this year they go into they go into a chance where, where this game is, is do or die. And I agree with Barry on it. Um, the more are cracking team. They have a lot of young lads coming up, uh, stepping into the fall and just taking taking really well to the senior championship. And look at it. It's going to be a humdinger of a game, I think. I think it'll probably be the game of the weekend for me in terms of just, I like, I love watching Paul Conroy play. And that's that's what he is a joy to watch. And even playing for St. James the last day, I know he was well marshaled, but he still kicked five, five valuable frees for them against... One of Abbey, and then you have the likes of the Sam O'Neill and Jack O'Neill. They're back this year. Johnny Dewan as well, another fabulous footballer. So, like you're just, it's. I think it's it's going to be a humdinger of a game, and it's one I just wouldn't be able to call. It's it's now important we're beginning to see the best of Sam O'Neill. Yeah, it is. Yeah, he, he he was a brilliant footballer. I remember I remember last year he played a he played a league game against us in club uh, club, and he it was probably on the fringes of the inter county team, and he played the league game against us, and he must have kicked. I'd say seven or eight points from play from centre forward. And it was actually a joy to watch him. He was kicking left and right and he was so comfortable on the ball. And I really do think he's going to be a star for the future. It, it, this is this is a difficult one to call. It's, it's probably like both games in group two, Jonathan. They're they're just it's it's a tight group overall, but this Dunmore James's is just gonna be very hard to call this weekend. Oh sure, and just to emphasize Sam O'Neill, like such a quality baller. Um, he's a Rolls Royce when he gets going. He had one point in in that game in Tube, like he was outside of the boot from under the scoreboard, and it was just the ease that he stroked it over it was just outrageous. Um, yeah, no, big big impact coming back. Um, was it was there a knock at the end when he kind of came off? Potentially, we see how that goes. Hopefully, he's okay. He's been blighted because he is a player that will stare not only for St James's but for Galway in the future. Um, if he isn't hampered with, with injuries, just a beautiful, beautiful footballer. Yeah, it's a huge game. I'll, I'll sound like a bit of a hypocrite describing this game. St. James's are one of my nicest teams that I, li I like to watch. I think they're extremely well managed. Barry Downey has a big, big CV in Dublin. Um, he's come down west now and settled in. He's got a really good job with them. Um, I've talked about the, we talked about the O'Neills there. Um, 
and obviously Paul Conroy, Johnny Dewan is, uh, as well. But it's just their their movement and their set plays off kickouts. I was ultraly impressed of, and they got so many away in in the in the first half in particular, long right. In, in that opening day out um, and they got so many scores off their own kick out as well very very well drilled set up um, but and here comes the but Dunmore for me as the guys have touched on it they were the team that I picked out at the start of the year when I asked who was your dark horses out of the you know the top uh, top few because I think they're building really something special here they've got that year under the system now the same management as the guys have touched on and I I don't think that the game against my Cullen will impact them at all one bit. I think, in, in fact, that they'll actually take some positives from it and, and use it as motivation and drive them forward. I expect Dunmore to win this game. I, I expect Dunmore to finish second in this group and I expect Dunmore to be very hard bet in the latter stages of the of the championship as well. I think they're that good. And, you know, we touched on it previously as well. It's not just the current crop and how well coached they are. It's that undescribables of that mentality of being in a, in a in a club and that experience and that such has such a a little illustrious past and everything that goes with that and there's that extra couple of points I think in that in terms of the, the motivation that it gives you and the the extra ones and twos that, that it gives you over the line and I yeah I expect them more to, to win this one like I think it's a bit of an inconvenience as well isn't there when in the St James's camp I think Paul Connery's brother is getting married as well at the weekend so. Best of luck to him, but it's a, probably a little bit of distraction or something else to, to manage in terms of juggle the game on, on Sunday. But I, I don't think it'll have much of an impact in, in the game at the end because I just think Damore will get things back on track and I expect Damore by three or four. Yeah, I'm going James is by two. Uh, Pork? I'm going to draw. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Barry, what are you going for there? I'm going for a draw anyway. Jesus, um, <laughs> uh, I'm over the more by the more by one, more by one. It's on to group three, and it's where I do have to uh, ask the Claire Galway man: Can Claire Galway beat Claire Finn this weekend? Claire Galway by eight. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> is, he, is, there, for, is there not a one in front of that? No. <laughs> I thought you were looking first. Um, <laughs> I think they'll have. I'm not sure they can beat them. Um, I'm sure they can beat them, but they will have taken a huge bounce from the Tomb Stars game. Um, Is that the biggest win Claire Goy have ever had at adult football, do you think, against Tomb? Probably, because Tomb were going well. Like Tomb would have seen themselves as, as contenders and... I think it was the nature of the win as well. Like it was a control, although it was only one point, it was it was a controlled kind of a win. And they're <clears throat> they're really good at the back, like really good. You know, Connor Campbell, a guy who again his career has been hampered by injury, excellent. Like Jack Lane is just a Rolls Royce of a defender. Luke O'Connor, lads, is is like he's he's top top class. Speed um, when he gets going, he's unreal getting forward. Oh yeah, he's class. He's 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 exceptional. Um, Darren Hennessy in the middle of the pitch, like he's around a long time, but constantly pops up with really really important scores. And he's probably injured now, is he? he? He spends a lot of time injured, so you wouldn't know. Like he he's a fella that that seems to have um, remarkable re- re- remarkable abilities for recovery. Um, can they get enough scores will be the against what will be a tight Curfin, you know, Curfin won't give them anything soft. Um I I don't know will they beat them, but I certainly think they'll come away from it going we're we're definitely making strides in the right direction and and that positive like you don't have to win every game for the trajectory to be going in the right direction. I think that's what they, when they come away from this game at the weekend, they'll be saying, look, is that chart still going upwards? And I, I, I certainly think it will. It's a good position to be in, Barry, because at the minute, Kervin probably don't know the best team at the minute, given the amount of players they've had away throughout the year. Yeah, I, I'd say they probably do, though. Like, they, they're, they're long enough around, you know, Kevin Johnson's a smart, smart you know, David Morris, really smart, like Brian Silk and Mike Comer and, and, and Chucky Monaghan, like they've, they've, they've a really good backroom team as well. And they will, they have a bigger picture as well for Cara Finn in that they're not, they're one of the few clubs, they're not looking at this only this year's championship. They're looking at 
a champ the championships in six and seven years time and trying to make sure that they have enough guys to keep keep feeding into that senior team and you know but they will know if Sunday was a county final I can guarantee you Curfin would know their best team and they'd be putting that best team out but they're still also giving guys experience to try and make sure that come two or three years time and maybe one or two more guys retire then they've already made replacements If you were Claire Galway this weekend Borg how do you approach it? Mm. Like it's kind of it's it's roughly enough what Barry is saying. It's 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 a cut for Clare Galway. They can go out t- test themselves against probably the best team in Galway. Go out play with no fear. Just try try different things. Like um, they're probably going like they're going to be going and not, not like and I, I don't think anyone will give them a chance of winning the game. So it's it's a perfect opportunity to go and just play the game off the cuff. See how you do. Play to try a system. See does it work. If it doesn't work, you aren't expected to win. If it does work. You're a hero, like so. It's an opportunity for them, and look at they have some serious footballers and Nathan Ranger, Mark Rowan, Barry uh, Barry Goldrick. These are some seriously talented footballers. So, like, it's it's not a it's not a it's an opportunity for them to go at Curfin, but like at the other end, like Curfin will look to just get the work done and move on. On that too, Ana Monaghan came into this forward line now, Pork, and he's definitely added something that maybe Clare Oh have been crying out for. In the closing stages in that Milltown game last year, they probably didn't maybe have the forward or two on the pitch that they needed to get those scores. Yeah, he's yeah. Look, he's he's an incredible talent. Like we know, he is young. He's like he's young. He's just came out of uh, I think it's minors, and he, like he is a he's an incredible talent. And look, it, it it'll be a joy to watch him excel over the next couple of years, and hopefully goes on to make making the county senior team and uh, fulfilling his potential that he has set himself. Is there any way you can see an upset, Jonathan? Uh, honestly, no. Um, I just think her Finn are, are too far ahead. Um, I think this one, as the guys have touched on it, it's a little bit with the new scoring system. It probably doesn't matter as much as much, but they don't they don't want to get a clip on. You want to try and build on this and get some momentum without winning the game, as kind of Barry touched on there. Uh, I know Uthra pushed her Finn hard. They've done that a couple of years now, but Curvin always have a way to, to get enough down down the, down at the end. Um and the class that they have coming back in. I th- I just think Curvin are too too much of a football and empire at the moment. There's too much going. Kevin Donson, they're probably sick of people listening to Bedro and just so um so respectful of the work that he goes. I think he's a really, really shrew guy. Um uh, and he's got he's what it, it isn't always the difficult or the easiest thing in the world to be in a situation like that because um yes you have a lot of players and a lot of quality but the, it does have to be very well managed because you're playing almost like two different teams at times aren't you aren't you and to try and keep everyone going and to look at the talent of the their second team and intermediate as well like such an abundance of quality up and down the club. So that has to be managed very, very carefully and you do have to look at the bigger picture a lot, but yeah, no, I, I, I think Carter Finn will just have too much, and I don't expect it to be annihilation or anything like that. But I, I think Clare Galway building their momentum, but Carter Finn will have will have too much here. Does the Utah performance not give Clare Galway a big chance this weekend? When you consider Bernie Power had to put pull off two remarkable saves. Not really, no. To be honest with you, uh, I, I really don't. I, I, I don't think Carter Finn will be anyway phased by that. Like that Utah game went the way I think anybody that's seen Goey football the last five or six years knew it was going to go. Um there have been similar type games between those the between those two sides in particular uh the last couple of last couple of years um and Curfee and all will find a way at the end. They'll keep patience on the football. They'll keep moving it from left to right the usual Kevin Johnson set up and they'll have a bit of quality at the end. Yes, probably could have done it at the scare from from their perspective. But I think even if the goal had gone in, I think Kerfin would have found a way. I think they always would have fi- find a way in that in that circumstance. I think but I think Kerfin are just ultimately Kerfin are a better team than every other team in, in the county at the moment. And and sadly for Clare Galway, that is it. Uh, I just can't see a, I can't see anything here but a but a Kerfin victory. Are you you're you're shaking the head there, Bit? He's he's, he's... He's, he's harsh. <laughs> Am I harsh? Oh, sorry, I don't mean to be harsh, but I think it's look. We've seen Curfin like win the last couple of years without all their county players. Look at the players that they've brought back in uh, there as well. Um, I just think Curfin are, are too good. 
So predictions. The long, we'll start the long, with, the long we'll, silence. We'll uh, <laughs> we'll we'll start with Clay Goy man first. How's this going to go at the weekend? Draw. No, not very. A draw. <laughs> and pork. I'm gonna say Carfin by six. And Jonathan. Oh, Claire Gall, we have this all day long. <laughs> uh, no, uh, in jest. Um, yeah, curve in by, by five or six. I'm going to go curve in by three in that one. Uh, the other game then in group three, Tomb Stars, Luke Derard. Pork, this weekend, it's seasons on the line for both of these teams. It is, yeah. And look at it. Um, when we've seen this group, we were, we were dreading one team of this as we've gone into relegation because... Look at their four. They're four very good teams, and they're four like for one of them for one of these two teams are going into like they're realistically looking at the relegation doors. They're probably knocking on it, but it's not a team that any of these four teams will. I would imagine will win their relegation semi final straight away. I think they'll be more than comfortable. Like they're they're all serious teams. All four of them are serious teams. So I look at it. It's a it's a strange one for two men up the yard. Like the loser of this. Um, it's a it's a tough one. Tum obviously being they're a season team, they're very good. They're usually always good, and they're always towards the end, towards the latter stages of the championship. Um, Oak they have a lot of talent in Matthew Tierney, into Tierney, and I lead. Um, uh, Eric Lee, like they've some serious serious marquee players. Like so, look at it, it's a it's a humdinger of a battle, and uh, it'll be an intriguing game to watch and be at. I'd say. Who's in better form? Better form, like it's 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 a hard one to tell, really. Like you know, Tum Tum are playing Division One football, all thing. Uxtrad, Uxtrad is a good Division Two camp, uh, campaign. So like you're looking, you're looking at that league, but that league is back in June. Like it ended back in June, so it's only challenges. And then you're going off the first game to uh, clear Galway, overturn Tum by a point, and Uxtrad play a curve, uh, curve in and lose by five. But like. It's it's a tough one to say who's a more informed really. Like you just you, it comes down to I think it'll come down to just going down the last ten minutes again. This will be going right to the wire, and then it's about who get, probably gets the best shooters on the ball for their team and more players to probably control the game. Yeah, both teams very fought back in the second half, but there was periods where Tumen Uthred did struggle in those games in the opening rounds. Um. Yeah, but there's periods every team struggles in the opening round. You know, it's not going to be perfect. Um, this group is funny. I wouldn't be surprised if this group ended up... You now, if, if we were here predicting Clare Galway versus Duke Gerrard, I, I think Clare Galway would have too much for them. But it wouldn't surprise me if this group ended up with Cor Finn on six points, Duke Gerrard, Tume, and Clare Galway on two points. And then it comes down to score difference. Um so th- I, th- I think it's funny, and I don't think I don't think Uthrard Archum's season is definitely over if they don't win this game. Um, it does have all the all the hallmarks of what could be a draw, um, but I think Tum might be just in a little bit better form. I think they they might have one or two more guys that can get them scores up top. Um, I've always been a fan of the tune forwards, to be honest. And I think the likes of like Carl McWalter could get scores. They have guys that can get scores. Carl McWalter, Brian Mannion, Ben O'Connell, Brian O'Donnell. They can get scores. I think they might just have enough to get over Ruth Gerard. But I think it'd be a good game of football. I think overall it'll be a good, good game of football. Like Alan Murphy will want to go and play um David Donlan and want to go and play and like all the noises coming from Tum are really, really positive. Like they were really impressed with Barry Kelly. You know, Morris Brosnan is involved with them kind of in the back room of of of, of analysis and stuff like that. And they will have been really disappointed with the result against Claire Galway. So I think they'll they'll have a little bit more to to I suppose prove maybe if that's the right word, but I think they'll just go and, and get the get the business done. Yeah, you talked about Alan Murphy wanting to go and play. He he seems to certainly want to go and play this uh, fly goalkeeper role um, for Uthred so far in the championship. Would you expect Tum to, to have a have a plan for him there this weekend, Barry? Yeah, I, I'm not a fan of that. A fan of that, to be honest. Um, I'm not sure exactly what it what it adds. Um, 
yeah, Tuma will have a plan for it. What that plan is, I'm not sure. Particularly on kickouts, I've always said this on kickouts, they might really go after that. And like Alan, yeah, if he finds himself under four or five shams bailing down on top of him from a high kick out, he might want to come come too far out the pitch again for, for the next couple of kick outs. But yeah, it, it wouldn't be what I do, but look, each to their own. Is that is that the role you play, Pork? <laughs> Oh, I just went in the goals for the penalties. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be a man for it during the game. <laughs> not in that. Not in that heat. I know. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> how do you see this, Jonathan? At the weekend, it, it does feel like it's it's probably the biggest game. Like when you look from a supporter perspective between two big clubs this weekend. Yeah, possibly one of the hardest games to call this weekend um, because there's there's a bit of frustration and unknowns on both sides. Really, isn't there? Like, Tum have too strong a word they've they've butchered a couple of league finals now in a row that would have been a big momentum uh, builder for them I think both both this year and last year they would have been extremely disappointed not to get over the line would have been a huge win you know not just obviously the title but getting getting a victory over Kurt Finn and, and everything that goes with that and, and because they are trying to build something um, it's a bit strange but they have been a side that's been in the doldrums they shouldn't really for the pick and like we've seen We've seen teams with not even a fraction of the population uh, and facilities and everything else like that, um, you know, overcome them in in recent years as well. Uh, but they are trying to get back on track again. Um, like it was interesting as well. It was still Jamie Murphy that was a big impact on that almost comeback. They're probably disappointed with a couple of wides as well in, in that opening day. Um, that felt like a, a big loss though for them not get over the line against against Chum because or sorry, against Clare Galway, big word, because that would have been a game that you had to be targeting from both camps, had to be targeting to try and get a win on that one and try and build on it then. But I, I do think Barry's made a very good point there. Um, I do think Kerfin will pull away and this is the one group where it will be quite open and quite split and uh, I don't think this group will be the shape of it, won't be decided really um, in, in this round um, because I just think there's that much of Kerfin will beat everybody. And it, that just spreads out the, the deficit across across the way then. Um, yeah, like Uktarar, they've been, they've always seen a team that has been there. I'm not quite, uh, they've played a quite defensive setup for the last couple of years and I'm not quite sure it's got the best out of the players that they've had available because they still have a lot of big men down the middle and they do have a lot of scoring threat as well. Tune will probably fancy Fancy their point of view as well, getting over the line and the, the far power that um, that Barry has alluded to there as well. I'll probably repeat my early point. I, I do think it's a very difficult game to decide. You touched on Alan Murphy going to go like at 42, is it, to make your debut for, for your club? Um, is interesting. And, and the whole fly goalie aspect is interesting as well because, again, not going off on too much of a tangent, but we've seen that phase pretty much being wound back a bit now. Um, particularly this year, uh, I think a lot of people were watching a certain Oren Lynch up, up, up in Derry and kind of realised that, I have to say to him, Barry, I don't know how many games we've done over the last 18 months, two years, and you keep on saying when he comes out in the middle, horse it into him and give him a clatter and see how he's fixed. And I suppose ultimately, ultimately you've been proven very right here because Lynch has come out and got smashed and got caught with his pants down a couple of times in it. And it's I think it's made everyone else change. We've seen so even... Even Armagh under McGinney, who was one of the, was he one of the first really to try and go crazy with it? Um, Blaine Hughes kind of came out the pitch, but it was a bit more reserved. The handbrake was was still close by there, so it's just a different approach. It's different, brings a different dynamic. Very hard game to pick. Just, Maybe a, a edge towards Tume ever so slightly. Just on that, we're just going to get Barry's predictions just on the final group too, because he used to go here. But Barry Tume to Ed first. How do you see that going? Uh, tune by two, and then just the two games in group four because you know I have to go here now. But Anna down Milltown and Killan and Berna. I think they'll be they'll be good they'll be good games. Uh, for relatively even teams. Unfortunately, I suppose the nature of it is someone has to end up in a relegation battle, and I just even though Kevin Walsh is in there and what he'll bring to them is 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 like you can't calculate it. I just have a feeling Killan could be one of the teams finished bottom. Uh, so I am going to go with 
and a down to be um we're going to go down and down to beat Milltown, Paul. Is, you'll definitely have to leave now. Oh, you? No. you have to. <laughs> Don't start to mother God. <laughs> yeah, I think I go down and down and down. I think again, I'm not sure. Like, yeah, they might drop Jack Cran back in front of Damien or however they're going to man- try and manage him. But I just have a feeling and down might have a little bit too much up top for Milltown. I'm going to go with and down by two, and I am going to go with Barna. Who probably very disappointed with the results against Anna Down, but they will take a lot from it. And I'm going to go with Barna by three against Kilana. And uh, Barry's predictions there. Uh, but just lads, your two predictions for the Tumuk Dare game there. Uh, Pork, how do you see Tumuk Dare going? I see it being two by one. I'm going two by one, yeah. Yeah, I'm sitting on the fence there and I'm going for a draw. And Jonathan, how do you see it? We're all very close. I'll probably just edge with Porrick there, tuned by one. But very, as we keep on repeating, very difficult game to to try and go for. But I'll just edge towards maybe the bit of firepower. They do a bit of experience, perhaps the tune have. Um, but yeah, it, it would have surprised me if Rook Dard win. No, it was similar enough. Well, maybe this time last year, Anna Down played Milltown. You two were doing uh, commentary for Goa GATV. I shook my head and I said. Jesus Christ, how did Anadown lose that? And it already has me thinking of they they need to put it away here early pork if they get the chances that they got last year. Yeah, they do. I, I think I remember I remember counting it back last year and I I remember sitting beside Jonathan for that, that, that last five minutes. And it was probably one of the funniest five minutes I experienced now when I'm trying to control his emotion uh, like commentary. Yeah. But uh, look all at is in, yeah. All is impartial, all is impartial. <laughs> uh, but look at you, yeah, like had it on, I think they had an up near, fifth, I'm going to say 14, 15 wides last year against Milltown. They, like it's an awful high number of wides and, and still only lose the game. I think they only lost the game by one in the end. And like that's that's massive. Like as you say there, Paul, the Anna just have to put the game to bed early and like they just need to get their shooters on the ball. Like um I remember last year there was a few few lads coming up the field, probably with about fifteen left. I think and I were up by about five at this time, I think. And they started just taking a lot of players started taking different pot shots and breaking away from probably what, what they're normally meant to do and get the ball into obviously the likes of Frankie Burke or Jamo, obviously. Um just get, offload the ball to them and let them kick the scores. But yeah, look, at Anna Down will have to start with a house on fire. They, they know themselves. They'll all, they all mill town one from last year. And um, I, 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 I would believe, I, I do think Damien is going to be a, a pivotal in this again, like, I, like he was in the game last year. And I, I do think he's just a, the firepower of, of a forward that you just can't stop, like, really. Has Stephen Curley brought something extra to this attack now, Pork, when you obviously already had Damo and Frankie in there but the Probably even when they're losing one or two players that have went abroad now, they kind of needed that kind of third inside forward threat. Yeah, they did. and that's exactly what it is. He, he just adds another dimension to the game for them. Um, he's he's young. He's uh, I know he's light, but uh, like he's he's a footballer with such raw ability, and that's massive. And uh, that's massive for added on. And it takes like if you'll see that Damien well Marshall is probably like he, he won't be. He'll still score a, a reasonable amount, but. It, it always takes the pressures off other forwards when another forward steps into the game. And listen, and as you say, they have lost obviously valuable backs there and there. Uh, so they have lost, I think, Kieran Potter, uh, Ryan Ford, I think, and Sean Ford. They're three. There were three of their starters last year. So look at it's it's a squad that's lost bodies, but at the other end they've gained someone like Stephen Curley. So it's a, a massive addition to that on own team. And Jonathan, obviously here your own club. At stages, maybe it looked like they're going to struggle against Kalanen, but they just didn't. Like they finished that game so strongly, did they look in a relatively good position again, Milltown here? Yeah, um, was, I think it was an important victory. I keep on saying it, and this the, the first win is is huge um, in a group that I keep on saying at the end is probably the most wide open because um, every team wanted Milltown as their top seed in the in in the group. There's the way the the run last year uh, and look. There wasn't a lot in a couple of those games that, that come through. We keep on touching that Anna Down game in Troom. That was a game Milton shouldn't have been anywhere near. Uh, it felt like a game Anna Down lost as opposed to Milton winning, if that, if that makes sense. It's so many wides. 
Um, and then Milton hit them with a the sucker punch at the end and they weren't able to react. And it is, isn't it a weird dynamic? Sometimes you get these with clubs that a little bit of mini rivalry. Um, but the year previously with the rearranged game midweek, Anadown knew exactly what they needed to do, the 12 point victory. And despite the late flurry from, from Barna, and the, the, you know, the, the drama, and then with the James Haley 45 at the end to, to get them the 12 point advantage that needed. Um, so, and then there's the flip of last year. It's just funny at times, isn't it? How, how the little bit of a rivalry between the sides develops. Um, both sides had mixed performances in the first day out, I, I would suggest. Both sides will be disappointed on how they kind of, I suppose, were fit, weren't in control of the games for large periods. Even Barnard, the first half against Sunderland was was quite even. Um, you did anticipate, and I remember saying it to someone at half time, that you'd still expect it on and down just to have a bit more football to get over the line at the end. And you know, what was it ultimately that this made a difference? Was a, a squeeze and a kick out? Uh, uh, ultimately, wasn't it really? And then Comer gets the ball and absolutely rifles it. Uh, that was quite a battle between himself and Sean Fitz, and like if you if you get someone at that level, you know, probably putting up to as much as he can go do, and Comer still comes away with correct me if I'm wrong one four I think he he shot in the in, in that he, game yeah he got he got ten points last year against Milltown too like they really struggled on him last year yeah like what's Jack Caron probably going to go back and put tie a rope around him or something like that we've seen like this it was is Sean a Blake last year and he didn't. He obviously didn't start that game against Killanen, so... Yeah, like he's had some injury problems. So I, I would imagine that Jack Caron will have to come back to that deeper role and, and try and tag him. Um, but yeah, as I said, he probably needs a rope and God knows what else to try and keep hold of him because this is a player that's demolished inter-county full-backs and inter-county defences over the course of the year. Um, like His performance against Mayo was just incredible earlier on this year. Um so that's the calibre is that the old cliche stopping the supply going in and, and whatnot. Um yeah, possibly. Um like I would imagine Mark Hare is suspended as well after that. Yeah, I was just so, about to mention that big loss. It's a huge loss. Like you are talking about a club that's you know, you're looking at the bones of a pool of 17, 18 players is primarily the one that's being used. Um so that's a huge loss for for Milton in particular, there um, they're probably going to have to, you know, try and get the Costellos in the in the half forward line to just do a bit of run. And the thing about it as well is, I touched on I think it was the review show with Drew Paul, like oh Manny now his card is marked. Um, I know there is a couple of, if he was last year, probably Kernan would have gone over straight to him possibly, and that would have been quite a battle. But he is going to have to be tagged. Um, and does that not nullify then if? Like he got such a big chunk of Milton scores in the second half in a game where Kalala must be hugely frustrated with themselves. Um, how to have the extra man and the advantage and just to completely get smoked out of the game. Um, that's a big disappointment for them. <sighs> yeah, it's a tough enough game. There's never really a lot between these sides, is there, over the years? And with a bit of emotional baggage between both sides, look, I'll be shot if I said anything else than. Than my own neck of the woods here in terms of it, but would it surprise me if Anna Down had enough firepower and had a, had that bit of momentum and not quite a revenge, but have that result from last year in their minds? Huge, huge game because to get a team with three wins here yeah. would set you up, set you up really, really nicely, doesn't it? it? It should be a great game. It really should be like um, it's a real old school feel to it as well in Tum Stadium uh, uh, and an even game in, 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 there as well. Um, yeah, and it's going to be quite the game to look forward to I think so I presume you're not going against your own club there so how much is sure, this is this is head heart moment really isn't it like yeah. if I value my own safety and and, and what not um, say so Milton by one but like that's that takes a lot of things to go right I suppose constructively you're looking at you think you would have to anticipate like Hegarty as well I've mentioned he was very good the first day out um, Frankie Burke was probably a little pointed by his perspective, but he always will will fancy himself in Tum Stadium as well. It's always a ground that he plays well in. Um, you're taking if Milton are to do it, they're they're going to need another monster performance by Carl Blake and the legs out in the middle of the field and try and turn it into a scrap and see if there's enough firepower in the end. Um, but yeah, it's probably head heart moment, and I let my heart do the talking here and say Milton by one, but we'll see how it develops. Yeah, and down for three. Um, for me there and Pork, how do you see it? Yeah, I'm gonna go and down by four. That's your block now, Pork. <laughs> <laughs> I 
thank God says you, is it? <laughs> thank God. Yeah. <laughs> the the final game... seventeen just to make sure he blocks me so <laughs> <laughs> the, the final game there then in that group, Kalan and Berna similar to any group really, both these sides need a victory. It's it's a difficult one to call. Berna Pork hung in it for large stages against Anadown, didn't get Anton out of it. Kalanin in control, then Milltown get reduced to man and they just can't really answer the Milltown fight back. So it's it's yeah. it's hard to know where either side is really. Yeah, it is, yeah. It's a tough one to be honest. It's a it's a hard one to call. It's a West Derby as well. Like, you know, like um Probably the loss of Keen Hernan as well. Still, uh, I don't think he's back this weekend for Berna. He's still a big, massive loss for that team. Like he's, you, you could see even when the Inter County when he came back in, he was such a driving force coming on as a sub. Um, he's a big loss there. But Kalan and then had probably have lost a few players. I think to on traveling as well. But the addition, obviously, of Kevin Welch into their management team has been massive for them. Um, so like this, this one will go. This one will be right down to the wire. Probably the, the one closest to the uh, to more James one. I call it a draw. This be the closest one I'd see to being to being that that as well. Like, is it up front where they're struggling for Berna? For both Kalanen and Berna. Um. Yeah, it is like like I know we touched on it there. There's uh, so Till only scored nine scores, but like Kalanen and Berna only hit eleven, and I think twelve Berna Berna hit against Anadown. Like it, it's not like you need to be hitting a target probably 15, 16 in championship games to be winning. Um, that's probably a big thing. You're kind of relying on still on Patrick Sweeney maybe um, for Kalanen there. Like so, it's it's going to be it's going to be a, a something of a battle, but. It's all, I suppose on Barna's side, then they'll have it'll be Oshin Gormley, I suppose, is the fella they'll need need to do the scoring. So yeah, it's going to be a tough one. Scores will be very very key in terms of the low scoring that the both have gone the last game. Probably all both teams have gone to shoot about twenty five points each. You know, my luck. But look at yeah, it's it's going to be a it's going to be a tough one. Um, if I if I had to put a sword to it, I probably would say maybe Kalanen by one. But I I. I I do believe a draw is as is good of a chance in this one. Because you're mad for the draws, aren't you? <laughs> Love them. Yeah, if if, if you, uh, that's his accumulator now for this weekend, if you all want yeah. to take, take inspiration from it. Uh, yeah, two draws. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm going there, Berna by two. I just think there was more positives for me, Jonathan, from Berna than Kalanen from round one. I don't know. Is there? Do Berna not have to be extremely frustrated with a game they, I won't say left behind, but a game they had control of for large periods? Clan um, had the same though, and they had an extra man. They did. They did. That's that's probably valid as well. Uh, but they were playing against a better team, wasn't it? <laughs> 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 uh, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Oh, All right, I'll clip that now. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um. Yeah, but I. I I was impressed in spirits with Kalalan. Like, look, there is a lot of youth coming through from that under twenty team, uh, particularly in the middle of the pitch. Um, Walsh and and Roach, you know, I think, would have learned a lot from from that opening day out. Um, there is potentially a bit more firepower. I know occurring got a good scatter of scores, and she normally is all as a threat. Um, but uh, like Sweeney up top is a raw machine. Um, if you can get the ball into him, and he's quite fond of. Uh, of, he's a great catch of the ball, so understandably the mark is often used and utilized by them uh, uh, as well. Yeah, it is. A, it is a tight. Is it? A, it is a tight game. But I would probably just lean ever so slightly against Kalalan, um for this one. But Jesus, yeah. Now, as I, much as I joke apart there about the draws, you wouldn't be surprised if that is the situation here on this one. I think, and again, touching on Parik, Keen Hernan being out is. Is a huge game changer, really. I think as well, but I just think that if Kilallan can kind of just, um, just address the issues from the Milton game, I think they'll have enough just to edge this one by one or two. If we move on then, just to get the intermediate predictions for the weekend. Uh, Group One Saturday, Brendan Zillanar and two o'clock the Prairie. Both sides here, part to be comfortably in the opening rounds. Yeah, um, a bit of a to be honest, a bit of a surprise. I didn't. I thought St. Brendan's would have a lot of firepower in the likes of obviously Carl Healy and Rory Cunningham. Um, so, but look, it was probably a bit of a surprise. But Clifton came out firing, and 
Uh, I think they've got a few of their uh, players back this year. So look at that'll be that'll be a humdinger of a game between Brendan's and Erlaren. I think the losers actually straight into relegation. I don't think there's a way back to them. I think in that one, but um, yeah. So look at it, it's a humdinger. I I I, 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 w- I wouldn't be able to call that one. I, I I'd say. It's a lot of depend on Balagar, if Rory Cunningham and Carl Healy are fit um, for St. Brendan's. If I was, uh, if they are fit, I, I do think Brendan should overcome the islands. Obviously, they've lost. Colin Brennan is a big loss, but Tyler Flaherty's back now. And Sean McCurran's look back and he, he's looked flying flying since his return from injury, which is a great sign. So you tipping there in Brendan's and Iron? I go Brendan's, yeah. I go Brendan's. Brendan's, yeah. Yeah, I think Brendan's might just have enough to see it out but like John Donnell's poor talks there it's in the overall context of things like this is going to be a big upset that Brendan's or Ellen Orange champions aspirations championship aspirations could come to an end this weekend yeah it's huge isn't it it is the moving weekend as we touched on uh, both championships um, I'll be a little bit awkward I'll probably go against the grain against both of you I think Ellen Ireland will have enough here and uh, Ellen Ireland would be my tip just to, to grind it out and get over the line by how much? Oh, two. Two, two. Uh, other game then, Clifton and Kilconley. Um, first versus second, one o'clock on Sunday. <sighs> Probably going to disagree with me here, but I think Clifton are going to beat Kilconley this weekend. I think they've had a good league. I think they have the players back on the pitch. Jared Givens is central. I think they're going to beat Kilconley by two. How would you see that, uh, Pork? Um... Oh, that's a tough one. I, I, to be honest with myself, I, I, um, I lived with the man all summer. So if I didn't, if I, if I didn't pick Kilconley, I think he'd kill me. Um, so to be fair, I do think Kilconley. I do think they'll get to the latter stages of the competition, though, as well. Obviously, the absence of David Prendergast is a big loss for them. But with Paul, Paul Fire and Niall Daly, like I think they're 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 a strong outfit, and they, they seem to be always there and thereabouts towards the last two three years, anyways. So you came with Kilconley there by how much? I'm going to Conley by three. By three. And Jonathan? Yeah, I'll vouch for Podgers' um, safety as well. I'll go to Conley to have too much and to Conley by three as well. I think that a bit of experience over the years uh, will be enough here. Like, like Clifton are flying it, but I just think Conley have enough there, and particularly in the players that the Park has touched on there. Yeah, so Conley by three also. Group two then on Spid Day in Williamstown, half three, Kenny Park on Saturday. Park, it's going to be about Spid's attitude this weekend. Because it seemed to be a bit off against Gabriel's. It's where you expected them to win. They didn't win it. And like they need to win this weekend. There, there's like we've all seen what happened to Ankara two years from senior to junior. This is this is a huge tie for them this weekend. It is, yeah. It's massive. And look at it, probably probably is a bit of a shock coming around the uh, the result against St. Gabriel's, but and um, as any day, any day anyone could beat anyone but so look at Spittle will go back to the I think they'll go back to the drawing board after that game they probably put in two hell of a weeks of training and then like the likes of now I'd say they'll turn to their main like the Anton Lee, Finian Lee. they'll turn to these boys and these will be massive in the in this game on Saturday and they have to have a massive performance Yeah how do you, how do you see that one Jonathan? Yeah similar I think Spittle will have too much I think there'll be a bit of reaction and um, yeah, no, I, 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 I can't see anything. Williamstown are, are, are they're struggling. I know Gary Kelly will continuously lead the fight, almost like the Lone Ranger at times. But I can't see anything but a, a victory from on Spiddle here. And your margin there, five. And on Spiddle left for you to work by how much? Yeah, I'm going uh, six. I'd say six. Yeah. Yeah, I'll go Spiddle by seven there. Um. Kenny Park then a day later for that final game in Group Two, Kerfin B St Gabriel's, Kerfin B could have their place wrapped up for here and into the last eight. Yeah, they could. Yeah, look at their they they were quite scary outfit. I, I was looking through the team sheet there last week and I see the likes of Ronan Steed talking out for the intermediates. You know, like just just the signs of the uh, the talent that that Kerfin have and the players they have builds them. So like, I think the likes of even Oren Birkin goes. He was. He was uh, in with the Galway Gal- County setup, and then if Barry Donovan uh, involved, so like it's just it's going to be. Um, I I just can't. I just see Curvin pulling clear here again as well. I just think they'll have too much with the experience of some of the players they have on that intermediate team. How much do you see Curvin be there? By five, I think Curvin by five. Yeah, it's it's uh 
it's a scary strength and depth they have here, Jonathan. Ah, uh, like just touching it, like yeah, an intercountry panelist goalkeeper playing for your second team. It's it's almost sick, isn't it? Like it's the the strength that they have is just plus four or five goal in their twenties. Yeah, and like then the experience as well. Like it's not just youngsters like Ronan Steed is there and, and the likes, you know. And I always compare that story last year. The the flip wasn't it? Ronan Steed got injured. And, Paddy Egan got his chance then earlier on and uh, kept his place the whole way through and ended up with Galway and 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 coming on in the championship for Galway as well. Like it's just a scary level of quality the whole way through. And um, I think there is a bigger argument here. I'm not sure what the solution is. I touched on previously as well. I risk of repeating myself, but yes, there has to be an opportunity for Clare Galway to have a platform to play all these players and keep them game time and not get them washed away in the system. But at the same time, if you're a smaller club um, struggling like like Williamstown, uh, it's a very difficult... I'm not sure what yours the fair is the system. I know the Camogie are moving away from that. The second team's not involved. I don't know what the answer is. Um, I sound like a bit of a politician here, just throwing something out, making noise waves, uh, perhaps. But uh, I think it is something to be looked at because I, like Curvin will win this game handily again. Uh, now as well and what is the what, where is the platform for, for Gabriels and Williamstown and the likes of the teams in the group it seems a little bit unfair perhaps uh, but it is what it is uh, but Kerr Finn by six yeah I think agree with you there too Kerr Finn to win by six as well group three uh, Saturday three o'clock Duggan Park St. Michael's tried to get their campaign back on track against the uh, New Carlo Senior Footballers um, man- Managers Club, which is hard to believe. Uh, it's one for the one for the pub quizzes, isn't, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, I think it is. <laughs> Not sure has there ever been an intercounty manager involved coaching a side in intermediate for for a while, anyway. So it makes it um, interesting. Football is where it's, where it's all at at the moment. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, like this, this is must win for Michael's Jonathan. Oh. Jesus, yeah. I, I spoke about it in a preview in the build-up that when teams go down, you see this in the across the border in the foreign sport quite a bit. When a team goes down from the Premier League and gets relegated, what is the answer? It's, it seems to be either a, you know, a bounce back straight away in building it or they just sink and swim and look look at the championship alone, look at the amount of teams that well, maybe before your time, probably even before Porrick's time as well, that would have been Premier League strongholds um, and they never get back. Um, so that's the type of dilemma that's with St. Michael's at the moment. Um, a real kick in the teeth look or more a very very shrewd side with a lot of quality um, in them and like the fact that a, a Roscommon or an inter-county goalkeeper is taken out of the equation and it doesn't appear to hamper them as well is almost like the curve in levels of quality is it um, in terms of, of abundance of, of, of pick to pick from but um, on, on, like, on the pitch there Huge, huge, huge game for St. Michael's. Um, it's imperative that they get they get over the line, and I think they will. But my God, Minlot won't won't be shy of of tearing into this game uh, as well. It's a, they'll fancy their chances as well, and you know probably come back to the likes of what Rob Hughes got three the last day was it? And he's watched them a good bit last year in the junior campaign, um, and he was their go-to guy. But at the same time, all sort of the sensible part of your brain will say that St. Michael's will have enough here. But, uh, you know, this is, this is a crazy part of my game going, what if, what if, what if? And that would certainly uh, mm-hmm. make some noise now. But I think surely uh, Michael's will react and get things back on track. Uh, and it's a game that they must, must win. And I probably fancy that they will get over the line. How much? Three. Do you expect Michael to get the campaign back on track, Bork? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I, I do. Um, I just think Mike, like uh, I think it was a late rally a goal the last day against Ormore. I think they learn from that. They still have a lot of experience and players there, and and Eamon, Eamon Branning, and then as well as is is uh was back for firepower the last day. So like I just think they'll have probably a bit too much for Menla. I know Menla are carrying a few injuries and stuff, so I just think they'll have probably a bit too much. Maybe um, Michael's by five. Five, yeah, I mm. wonder. I'm going to go Michaels by six there too. Uh, expect him to get it back on track, but it won't be easy against Benlaw. Final game then in Group 3, Jonathan, Glenn and Maddie, or more Murray, the table toppers. A win for either D-size puts them into the knockouts. 
Yeah, <laughs> I'd probably repeat what I said about Milton. I have to be careful here as well. And this one, there's there's a there's a bit of scan involvement and uh, on the line <laughs> here as well. Um, so, not just not just one person. Yeah, that's what I said. A bit, a bit. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> Parik is laughing there. He knows. <laughs> um, yeah, but like, look, they've been you know very difficult site to beat, haven't they? In the last couple of years. Um, in intermediate, but I think or more short enough. The last day out, huge, huge win, getting over the line. Probably one that they would have targeted first day out, and one of those situations. Jesus, if we can beat these, it sets the group up absolutely perfectly. They can take control of their own destiny, really. Here with another win, I think that'll be enough um, to secure the top spot and and on, on the straight the week off and the straight way through. Um, yeah, it's hard to see anything but a but an or more victory here. As much as I will give uh, best luck to my fellow cl- fellow clubmates on the line uh, for Glan, but it is hard to see the quality that or more have marked uh, combined with a bit of confidence that they've got over the line after that victory over St Michael's. And yeah, it's probably looking at or more by four or five. Yeah, I'll disagree with you there. Gonna go Glen and Maddie by three. Um two, two. Yeah. You're lo- you're looking for a, for a few drink in, in Jordan's, is it? <laughs> yeah, you won't be returning home so this weekend, no, Jonathan, will you? No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, well I know the lads they'll probably listen and they'll probably clip it up and use it as motivation. The best of luck for them if they if they do. But um <laughs> I I just think Ormore should have enough quality. I think there's a bit more firepower there. Um but Look, they, they'll be certainly well mo- motivated by anyone that's watched Mr. Malahi play in football or be on the sideline or even look at his father on the sideline over the years. They won't be shy of a bit of motivation there as well. So pin it to, pin it to the wall there, JD, as well, if, if you're involved in it. But I would still lean towards Omar. Yeah, it's probably the biggest 50-50 one this weekend, Pork. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I, I wouldn't see it being the big scoreline that you're kind of predicting. I, I do think both teams are... Uh, for me, top probably six, five, six teams in in, in the intermediate. So it's, it's going to be a lot tighter than we'd expect. I think I, I do think it'll come down the stretch and probably just by the looks of by the looks of more and more they do have that maybe one or two fours that could probably catch the game by the scruff of the neck and and uh, finish finish it for them. Um, I will go or more maybe by one or two max max. We need another water and hole park. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, get... your face would be hanging up in the Glen of Maddie dressing room. <laughs> yeah. oh, without doubt. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I'll get reminded. <laughs> Finally then, just uh, group four before we finish. Uh, Kilker and Michal Brannock's quarter past five Saturday evening in Kenny Park. Brannock's were, I think they were second or third in my first power rank. It's safe to say that uh, changed fairly quickly after the results in the Intermediate Championship after round one. They're coming up against Kilkerry and Clonburn quarter past five in Kenny Park on Saturday. It's it's crucial for Brannox to get their campaign back on track here, but it's crucial as well for Kilkerry and Clonburn here, Pork. Yeah, it is. Yeah, um, I was, I was to be honest, I was kind of half surprised by the uh, Miel Brannox results against Caltra. I know you got a bit of stick for it, Paul, but uh, <laughs> like it was it was a bit of a surprise. I always kind of thought Miel Brannox would be pushing on the door. I do think they'll regroup and regather, and I do think they'll overcome. I do think they'll get the better uh, Kilcarrington Burn on on Saturday evening. Um, I just think they have they have a lot of firepower back. Kilian Curry back, Ronan Boyle on in between the goals. Like you have a lot of a lot of good footballers there in that maybe Albanese team. So they probably went back to the training ground and put in the hard graft and look at um they look to pick up two points this weekend. I'm going to go Brannox by about four as well. Brannox by four there. How would you see it, Jonathan? Yeah, probably the result that probably shocked me the most um, in terms of the opening round of games. I fancied Brannox to have a bit of momentum going forward. Um, and Caltra kind of caught them on the hop, didn't they? And what a victory that was for Caltra. But you would imagine that... Oh, yeah, I'd probably lean towards Brannox by two or three, but it's a big game for them, no more so than... St. Michael's, that is a big game. Two defeats would be unthinkable, really. Uh, but I, yeah, I will lean towards uh, Bronx by two or three. Yeah, I think Bronx too will get their campaign back on track there. I'll go Bronx by six. 
the final game then obviously Calter uh Carter and Shamrocks in, in group four and that Calter obviously massive win Jonathan Carter big win for them another one here where it'll go a long way to putting them into the knockout stage mightn't guarantee them top yet but these two these two teams now will be looking to back up their opening wins they will uh, I caught the ends of the Cartoon game they were quite impressive um, a good bit of far power real fight as you would expect um, big one for Calter as well isn't it can they build on that momentum the shock factor is probably gone with them in terms of the way they caught Brannock on the hop um, probably be a bit of a, a party um, spoiler here but a fancy cartoon just to edge this one how much? Two. Two. Okay. Be prepared for the abuse if that result goes wrong. Um, for that one. Well, um, I've, I've, pl- I've plenty of targets on now. After, so to say, a good good um selection of people there as well. So it's good a full platter. Is that what they say? Yeah, that's it. And uh, Pork, how, how do you call this one? Yeah, I'd be similar enough to what Jonathan said. Like, um, look, it was a fantastic result for Calter at first day out. Um. I do think Corto was just getting the firepower back. I think Paul Varley made a return. Joe Donnan return, like um, Pete Finnerty as well. Like they've just got key players back in key positions. And, and that's, I think, is going to be very beneficial in terms of going forward for the latter stages of this championship. And I do think Corto will have a say in it. Um, that's why I, I do think Corto by three, yeah. I just after thought of one thing, though, that potentially is a bit of a game changer. Uh, a Hasker out the Corlin, I believe. Yeah, they're um, they're they're on zero points. It's it's yeah. not it's yeah. Well, they're I don't know they're technically out yet, but, but it's looking they're, fairly. They're they're yeah. doomed. There, I think. Yeah. Will the yeah. likes of the Mannions come back? I know they've been dug out and been rolled in for big games before. Like, they're they, yeah. They didn't play any of the groups last year. They played the quarter final though. All right, when they got to the knockout stages, but there be two massive additions like 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 yeah. the, the physicality alone and like they're half they're you know they're decent footballers as well so something to keep an eye on isn't it mm-hmm. that's a couple of points swing straight away if yeah. even one of them was to to, to tug out yeah. huge just finally before you finish uh, your own club poor Hepford in action against Killer Aaron in the junior championship this weekend the winner of that Goes, does it go straight into the final or the semi final there? The no, it, it's, it's so it's similar enough. It's first qualifies straight to the final and second and third are going to the playoff. But bearing, I think, a, a result from um, if Ballas Low pick up a result against Athen Rye and then Hedford were to beat Killer and they would be qualified then straight to the final. Yeah, so look at it, it's a it's a massive game for them. Great opportunity as well. Um, probably one less game to be playing. Um, I know there's a few lads with a few niggles and stuff, so if they can just put the guns to the guns to the floor on Saturday evening, get over to get the job done and then uh, probably can nearly rest bodies. I know there's a few few carrying a good few different knocks and stuff. So yeah, look at it. It'll be it's a humdinger and not a nice place to go over to Bernard Jarrett playing Killer Air in a championship game. You know, you're you're coming up against the old style of the Gaelic <laughs> football. So you're 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 going to war when you go there. So hopefully yeah the lads can just pull through now and uh, pick up the two points. Yeah. I thought you were going to ask him about Chicago there. You have more clubs than Tiger Woods these days, is it? <laughs> <laughs> I can't decide which sport I like. <laughs> West is the same thing, Cairo, or the standout and first yeah, straight into Carole the West final. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's, That's the same thing. Yeah, more works. Amazing, isn't it? Like, you know, both, you know, yeah. and, and, and Cairo 10, 15 years ago, I mean, battling out on the top of the, the top ranks of senior football. Yeah, and there's probably going to be another big club joining them. Whoever comes down from intermediate this year as well. Yeah, so. yeah like you, you look at the, you look at the uh, senior and how tight it is. You look at the intermediate, how tight it is. Like the, we're blessed. It's a highly, highly competitive, and the structure. I was a little bit. I have to hold my hands up. I was a little bit of going, oh, why are they making us go in sixteen and sixteen? But probably hard to argue with it and the quality that you have and the refine that you have here. Uh, it makes it really, really interesting and. It's yeah. a fine line, isn't it? Yeah. A very fine line. Yeah, it's not as clear to call who's going to come down anymore as it used, maybe no. it used to be. Yeah, no, it's definitely not. But that's all uh, we do have time for on today's show, a bumper show ahead of round two. And uh, thanks to 
Jonathan and Pork and as well as Barry earlier on for coming on to the podcast as well this week.